I made me some paper logs. In the first part of this video, I'm going to go over how I made the paper logs. And in the second part of the video, I'm going to go over the two different paper brick log makers that I used. Making paper logs is a long process. Uh, tearing up the paper, whether you're tearing up newspaper or using pre-shredded paper or you've still got to shred the paper or get the shredded paper. So the first part of the process, I used a large uh, ice bucket, um, perfect for what we were doing. So we stood around and tore up newspaper. The newspaper we had collected from friends. Uh, so it took a little while to collect uh, newspapers, obviously since the World Wide Web came about. Uh, newspapers aren't selling anywhere near as much as what they used to uh, so collecting it can take a little bit longer uh, I suppose way back when newspapers were used more so because they were readily available whereas nowadays not so readily available um, so to get to making the paper fire logs tore up all the newspaper and my theory was to tear the pieces up as small as possible. I thought if it was more like shredded paper, it would work better. Um, so I don't know um, if that's the case or not, because I haven't trialled any other way. So we did sort of spend our time in tearing up the paper into smaller pieces. And the process got really tedious. So obviously standing there for quite some time with a lot of newspaper, filling up the um, bucket um, before we'd even filled it up with water. You might liken it to snooze fest watching paint dry, watching grass grow. So it did take a bit of time to do. Bucket. So now the ice bucket's filled with paper. Next step was to fill it with water. So I filled it just to enough uh, that would soak in, the paper would soak in all the water. So I didn't try and overfill it and didn't want to underfill it. Yeah. Made sure that all the po paper was able to be soaked. I moved them all around, flipped them out and dug around the bottom. The next part of the process was stirring up what we had in the ice bucket. Now, I don't think that you necessarily had to do this, um, but I did think it was a good idea to try and squish it up a little bit. I'm not sure if that was what you're supposed to do or not, but it's what I did. So I thought I was smart. I was thinking that I was one up on the paper and the water and I brought out my Ubute industrial cement mixer or the hand cement mixer as you can see. So I powered it on and of course it went everywhere. It's probably a little bit too powerful for me. So it did go splashing around all over the place, but it was effective from what it did. Would I use it again? No. I'd probably just use a smaller paint stirrer type, um, you know, with a, a hand drill and a, um, a paint stirrer on the end of that. A bit smaller and it, I think it would still be just as effective. The other one that I would probably potentially think about using would be a garden auger, like a power planter. I'd put that on the drill and see how that went. That would probably just as effective. More so just to stir it up a little bit. So I found that when I stirred it up, it did mix in really well. And I think it did make the next step a little bit easier. The next process was playing with the wet paper. So actually using the paper brick makers to make the paper fire brick logs thingies. So I used two different brick makers. One was a Cambrook combustor brick maker. That's the vintage one. And the other one was an unbranded Chinese model. The unbranded model came in just a brown cardboard box. And from China. It's got the China label on there. Okay, so they were the two uh, paper brick makers or the combustor brick makers that I used. And this process wasn't too bad. Um, the bricks came out all right. So um, it was like playing paper mache in a way. So I failed that at school. My balloon burst. 
but making the paper bricks was much more su successful so I did feel a lot better about that. I had to work this one. Yeah, but it's Chinese. on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. You need like some little clamps or something you can quickly clamp on a bit like you have oh, a yeah.
their two hands. Mm -hmm. I think. That wasn't too bad. Okay. It's a brick. Yep. Looks very, very similar to the other ones. So making the paper bricks, put them on a pallet, let them dry. Then the rains were going to come, so I moved them under cover, and they probably took about two weeks to dry out. Now this was during winter time. In summertime, I reckon that would be more than halved. Um, yeah, so they took a little bit of time to dry out. So that's how I made the paper fire logs, or combustor bricks if you want to go with what the Cambrook call them. I think they've got a few different names. Newspaper logs, fire logs. Paper logs, what is it? Paper logs, paper bricks, combustor bricks. All right, now let's go over the two different um, brick makers that I used. First of all, the Chinese one. First of all, the unbranded model we'll go with. Um, so what I did find with this one was that it did hurt. It's not as soft on the hand. So when you really had to push it down, it didn't really work that well. And it sort of felt a little bit flimsy. So it wasn't, it didn't feel anywhere near um, as good, um, but it still did its job. So I did have this one first. So this was the first one that I did have. And then I bought the Cambrook one. Um, so I, I, I already had this one lying around, just hadn't got around to making any bricks. And then I, I thought, oh, I'll give the other one. The other one is the, really the one that I was looking for when I originally purchased this. I was a little bit hasty and just didn't buy my time. Um, so to get the vintage ones, you have to sort of really wait your time a little bit, look online and, and see what's around, see who's selling them. So they are around, they're you know just a matter of patience, I suppose, which I didn't have when I bought the unbranded one. So the Cambrook Combustor Brick. I found this one to be much, much better. I purchased this one via Instagram. Thank you, Retro Rescuers. I was looking around for one of these and as soon as they popped it up, I'm like, I want that one. Um, so it was a really easy process to get this. Um, and thanks a lot. The bricks look fantastic and they burn, which is a good result, I think. Um, so this, the Cambrook one is more of a vintage model, made in Australia, it had a patent pending, uh, so that would have been a few years ago. Um, and I think it was a better, the easier one for me to use anyway. And I thought the bricks came out better. So there is a difference between the two. So the combustor brick I felt like was a lot easier to use. Um, yeah, it was a lot easier on the hands to use. So was there any difference in the bricks between the two? I don't think there was. Um, if anything, I felt like the Cambrook one, the combustor brick, um, press them a lot better, but that was because it was easier to press and uh, get them to uh, do what they had to do. So what did I think about the whole process? Um, well, tearing up the paper did seem to take a lot of time. So if you were able to source a bulk lot of shredded paper, I think that would be the way to go. Um, otherwise, maybe let it soak longer. I'm not too sure, but that did take a little bit of time. The actual pressing of them, I didn't mind it. It was kind of fun. So. I did enjoy it. Um, I do. I am a bit of a sort of practical person, and, and do like doing, you know, making your own things. I suppose. Um, and I wanted to trial it out for myself just to see how it went. The negative on it was the time taken to do it. Um, but I think the positive is that they burn really well once they're dried out. They do burn really well. The other thing is that they're lighter. Um, so when we're putting them in our camper trailer or in the back of the car or what have you. Uh, they weigh a lot less uh, than an act than actual wood so I suppose if you're traveling around and you know you're paying for fuel and you, you're carrying a heavy trailer or um, they're on the back of your tray or something like that um, a, a real log as opposed to a paper log makes a big difference so there is a quite a bit of weight difference I would say more than 10 times the difference in weight so these are quite light where is that? Um, yeah, it's quite heavy as a log. The next thing is, I think, as well as being light, they're easier to stack in your camper trailer or ute or wherever you might be carrying them. Um, so if you're gonna stack them somewhere, so when we go camping, we can use them, uh, which was our purpose of what we thought we'd use them for. Um, so we can stack them a lot, lot better and probably carry a lot more 
uh, the Montmoy wood of the uh, wood. So I think that's a real advantage, um, considering that they burn just at about the same amount of time. Um, I think it's perfect, light and easily stackable. That's it for the paper brick log makers, uh, combustor bricks. Uh, please give the video a like, hit the subscribe and leave comments. If you've got any comments or tips for us, uh, we would love to hear them. And thanks for watching. Oh, catch. Doink. Now we have burned some in the Auspeak log. Is that coming out? Yeah. Really there. Oh. So the next step, 